Okay, so limits. What are they? What is a limit? It's the y value. As x gets near a particular value, I want to see what the output is. We call it L, but it's the y value. And that's all it is. You want to get near a particular place and then find out what the y coordinate's going to be. So what should you always do first when you do this? Always substitute. Okay, those are what limits are. I always want to see what's, what my function is getting close to when I get close to C. Matter of fact, we don't care what happens at C. So we don't care. What happens at C, just near C. So you take a limit and let x go to infinity. You never get to infinity, but you can see what is happening to the y value when x gets really big. So we really, this is the last day of the limits. This covers all the limits we need. And what are the, at least for the moment, um, what are the things that can happen? When you substitute in, after substituting, what will happen? What will you get? There's only four things that can happen. You could get a number divided by a number. Now, I do have to be careful with that. As Mr. Dahman pointed out, that's true if you have polynomial functions, rational functions, you have nice trig like sine of x, cosine of x. And let's see what else. Uh, root functions, exponential functions, log functions. They're nicely behaved functions. It is not true when you end up with a uh, greatest integer function. And uh, that's probably why some people get confused. Greatest integer function you must check from both sides. So when you substitute in and you get a number, that's not necessarily the limit. That's the problem. If I want to look at the limit as x goes to 0, this greatest integer function, it doesn't exist at 0 because from the left it's negative 1, and from the right it's 0. So the greatest integer, you must check both sides. So when in doubt, if you really don't know, you must always check both sides. But you know, I know that polynomials and all these other functions up here behave nicely. They're smooth. And they don't have any jumps in them. So, greatest integer, you must check from both sides. And the only reason why we don't have to check on um, the polynomials is because there's a theorem that says we don't have to check. A theorem is something somebody has proven to be true. That's what you're taking uh, my fourth year of college level calculus. We actually prove all the calculus. You can prove all the algebra too, by the way. That's what you do. Um, yeah, I had no idea that it was all proofs, but I, I, the calculus proofs weren't as bad as the uh, algebra proofs, a little far worse. Okay, so we get a number divided by a number. What else can we get? Anything that has a break in it. There's a jump in the graph, there's a major problem. So if there's a break in the graph, you're going to have to look at in the breaks. So it might not be a jump, on, it might just be a hole. So you really have to be careful, a little bit careful with that. So, so the, leading you really down the wrong path when I say that, I'm assuming just something nice. The greatest integer function, it doesn't work. That's the big one. Okay, what else could you get? You could get zero divided by a number. And that's still holds for the greatest integer. You have to check from both sides. And that would give you zero. They're basically the same thing. So this would just give you a limit of L. Okay. What else could you get? A number divided by zero. And we have said it's undefined, but we really can give it, I want to say a value. We really can. And we'll come back to that one moment. And the last one is zero divided by zero. And you do have to be careful 
And we aren't going to run into these, the ones with multiple zeros in the numerator and denominator. This is going to be a whole. But you also could have a number divided by zero, but it won't be that complicated. So let's go, and here's where you have to do work. Don't stop. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, so that's where you have to do the algebra work. That's the ones you don't like, right? The first three are the easy ones, actually. Even three is easy. What happens when you divide a, a number by a very, very small number? Remember, we're not at zero. So if you took five divided by 0 0.001, or what if you took five divided by 0 0.00001, isn't that getting closer to zero? Yes. So let's, I'm going to take out my calculator because it bothered some people in the last class. What do you mean it's infinity? So here I actually did divide it by uh, 5. I'm going to go up to smaller. No, I'm not. 5 divided by 0 0.0001 was 500,000. Excuse me, I said it wrong in the last class. This one, this is really close to 0. And that's 5 times 10 to the 10th. So what kind of answer is that? That's infinity, isn't it? If you let x continue to get smaller, closer and closer to zero, then what's happening is this division problem is going to be infinity. It might be negative infinity. We're going to do some problems now. Okay, so these are vertical asymptotes. And the other type of limit problem we did yesterday was the limit as x goes to infinity, and you must check also as the limit as x goes to negative infinity. You must check both directions. And what, what do we get here then, Grant? If I'm looking at x going to infinity, I'm looking at, these are vertical asymptotes here. These will be, what we just did yesterday, horizontal ones. And these give you and behavior. Sometimes I don't care about what's happening near the origin. I want to see what the function is doing way later in time. So maybe I want to make a prediction based on that. And so maybe there is a horizontal asymptote. I don't know. And that's, those are the things you have to look at with limits. So we're going to look over here at the next page. And we're going to talk about the infinite limits as x approaches a value, like 3. The vertical asymptote. Okay? So the vertical asymptote, the equation for that is x equal to a. And we write it, the limit as x approaches a from the right side and x approaches a from the left side. And this is nothing more than a domain issue. This is domain. This is always going to be some number divided by zero. So all that's all we're looking for is where the denominator is equal to zero. And then I've got to look at that from both directions. Okay, so I'm going to do y equals 1 over x squared. But before I do that, I'm going to graph y equals 1 over x so that we should know what that one looks like. Right? No? <laughs> we should know what y equals 1 over x. Then we're going to come back and do the other one. y equals 1 over x is a hyperbola. Looks like that. And what the other one side looks like? Okay, we'll be down in the third quadrant. Okay. So what happens if I do y equals 1 over x squared? We'll come back and look at this one in a second. First thing I'm going to do is copy it. Okay, now I wrote Okay, what's going to happen to, to 1 over x squared? Obviously, the first part is still going to be the same. What's this going to do? Well, that graph's not right. 1 over x squared. 
next square. It's going to flip over the y-axis. It's going to become positive, right? This comes in this. Okay? Because you're going to take your x's, which are negative, and you're going to square them. So now, when we look at our limit, where's the problem? Now, it's easy to see on the pictures. It's easier to see on the pictures than it is to think about it symbolically. As x approaches 0 from the right side of 1 over x squared, what is this going to? Positive infinity. What if I come from the left side? 1 over x squared is positive infinity. What if I don't have the picture? Then I'm going to have to put some values in and see if they're positive or negative. But you know what? I don't have to think real hard because if I square a negative, it's positive. Anytime you get a number divided by zero, it's either going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. Take your pick. It's just to work out. So why do I care about both sides? Let's look at what y equals 1 over x. If I take the limit as x approaches zero from the right side of 1 over x, I'll put my little dot there. So now, all the little dot is going up here and it's going up to positive infinity. It's going up. So that's positive. What if I have the limit as x goes to zero from the left? And if you have to look at the pictures, that's okay. Ask. Ask. I'm coming in. I'm following this road. I can't go to the origin. The road is making me do this. Here, I'm going to come in from the left side of zero, and I have to follow this road. And the road is making me go down to negative infinity. Put numbers in. Put point negative point zero 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 one, and divide that one by that. You'll see that the number is getting tinier and tinier. I mean, it's magnitude is bigger and bigger, but the sign makes it go down. Okay, you could put some values in and just look at it. So let's look at the tangent function. Now, there are a couple ways to look at this tangent function. We could look at it as sine of x over cosine of x, or we could look at it just as the tangent function. Let's first look at it as just the tangent function. Okay. Because we should know what this looks like. And honestly, this is the easy way. But, you know, it's kind of nice to look at why I have asymptotes here. You know where the asymptotes are? I don't want to be the same distance. There we go. It's a little better. Where are the asymptotes, you know? It's pi over 2. So why is it pi over 2? We're going to analyze it using that identity. And what happens over here? It continues going this. Now, it matters what direction you come into pi over 2, doesn't it? What if I come in from the left side of pi over 2? Of my tangent function. What's this going up to? Infinity. I'm looking at the y value. Remember that? What if I'm coming in from the right side of pi over 2? Now we're going to get to pi over 2, but what's this going to do? I'm going to come down here and it's going to go to negative infinity. So I do have to look at it from both sides. You can't assume it's always the same. It'll be the same from uh, both sides. I can't do that. Well, why is it that works like that? So I'm going to draw, I'm going to look at the sine and the cosine. Sine is not a big deal. Cosine is big. There we go. Okay, so here is my sine function. And we should know that what that looks like. And here is my cosine function. And actually, it's kind of cool to think about. It. Where is this? This is at pi 
This is at 10 pi. This is pi over 2. Y is the tangent going to be a different sign. This is 3 pi over 2. Let's do the same thing with sine. Okay, so I've got 0. This is pi. These are the quadrants. This is pi over 2. That's 90 degrees. It's the first quadrant. And sometimes this happens on the exam where you have to actually analyze your answer, interpret it by looking at the trig functions like I'm doing right now. So it may feel a little strange, but we'll, get, we'll hopefully get ready for that. Okay, so the tangent of x is the sine of x over the cosine of x. So why do we have vertical s opposed to pi over 2? Because... What's true about the cosine? What's the cosine of x? I have a zero in the denominator, remember? Tangent is sine over cosine. So now, let's look at the limit coming into pi over 2 from the right. I'm kind of out of space. Using the sine and the cosine. I mean, I know what tangent looks like, so I would use that. But sometimes we have to be looking at this idea. Okay, I mean, I want to go from the left, sorry. So if I put a little dot on here, I'm going to come into pi over 2. And I'm going to come into pi over 2. Okay, what's happening to the sign from the left? Positive or negative? Because all I care about is it's going to be positive or negative infinity. That's positive, and this is also positive. So this is going to be positive infinity. Because both sine and cosine, up until pi over 2 in the first quarter, are both positive. Now, let's do the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the right side. So if you forgot what tangent looks like, you can still do this. So now I'm going to come in here. See what I mean by sine? You don't really like to check from both sides because it's so nice. But is this positive or negative? In the second quarter, is this sine positive or negative? That's positive. And what about the cosine, though? Coming, pi, coming from pi to pi over 2, it's negative. It will be 0, but it's getting to 0 from the negative side. So what's the answer to this going to be? Any number divided by 0 is going to be infinitely large or infinitely small. Negative infinity. Which works with that graph, by the way. But if you forget... And there, there will be, there could be some AP problems where we have to do that kind of analysis of knowing that the sine is positive in the first two quadrants, cosine is positive in the first, but negative in the second. Remember, all students take count. You can go back to that one. Okay. So, let's summarize this and let's actually go into doing a problem. If you find horizontal asymptotes, it's end behavior. X is going to go to infinity. So X goes to positive infinity or negative infinity. They're not, and they might not be the same on both sides. There's no, you don't always have horizontal asymptotes. So they might not even exist. But definitely, be careful. You've got to look at both positive infinity and negative. We'll do that worksheet problem because that's the 2008 exam problem. Okay, true. Find the vertical asymptotes here. Vertical asymptotes are when you go to a C value and you get a number divided by zero. And when you do those, you are going to have to look at X approaching C from both sides. So you have to do the limit. You always have to look at the limit from both sides, actually, no matter what you do. You have to look at that limit and you have to look at this one. So just kind of get in the habit of it. You don't always have to write it down if it's a polynomial, it's going to be the same. But, you know, it's, it's good for you to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do with this final example is we're going to find all the asymptotes, and we're going to graph it. And the easiest point on my graph to graph is f of what? Zero. Because what is f of zero? It's 2 times 0 over 0 minus 1, which is 0. Okay, so I've got a starting point. Always helpful. That's turn out to be hyperbola again. Okay, so I'm going to do scroll down here and get this ready. Which one do you want to do first, horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Okay, so horizontal. Now, I, I don't memorize 
I just think horizontal. That's one happens way away from the origin, so I have to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x over x minus 1. And I also must do the limit as x approaches negative infinity. There is no work to show. In fact, I think this problem has been on the AP exam a long time ago. No work to show. You just say what the limit is. Now remember, as x gets close to infinity, that negative 1 doesn't count for anything. So this is approximately 2x over x, which is 2. So y equals 2 is a horizontal asymptote as x gets larger. Don't forget the y equals. Depends. If they're just asking for the limit, then you just give them the limit. So make sure you answer the question. What happens when x goes to negative infinity? This is still going to look like 2x over x. And it doesn't matter if x's are negative, they're going to cancel out. So it still is 2. But don't assume it's always going to be the same. Okay? So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Because as x gets to be either large or very small, if x is a million, that's $2 million divided by a million dollars, it doesn't matter if I took a dollar away from you. Does it? Is it important? It's just it's so negligible. It's just so teeny. Well, let's talk about a budget deficit. If I give the uh, the country another dollar on the trillions that we owe, is that really going to help our budget deficit? No. <laughs> yes, and we'll do one that is different. Okay, now let's do the vertical asymptotes. And the, all vertical asymptotes are, that's the domain problem. Can't divide by zero. So where do we divide by zero here? Where is the problem with this function? Not negative one. One. Okay, so we have to go from the right, and we have to go from the left. You know, it doesn't seem fair that you have to have two limit problems when you do this. So out of one problem, I get, <laughs> I get two. Actually, I got four if I look for all the asymptotes. Here's where you substitute in some numbers, because it's either going to be positive infinity or negative, and I don't know. And the only way for me to know is just to try a number to the right. What's a nice number just to the right of one? That's too far. Because there could be another vertical asymptote in there. Remember last year, they had them really close together. 1.001. Because all I care about is, is it positive or is it negative? That's it. Because this is going to be division by zero. When you divide any number by zero, the number gets infinitely big in magnitude. But if I put 1.001 in, I'm going to get a positive number in the numerator, and what kind of number in the denominator? Positive. So that's going to go to positive infinity. You can look it on your graphing calculator, you can divide it out. Okay, what would you like to try? One from the left. 0.999, is that thing okay? Okay, so 2 times 0.999, is that positive or negative? Positive, 0.999 minus 1, negative, so this goes to negative. Now we have enough information to try to graph this. We have vertical asymptote at 1 and a horizontal at 2. It does happen to be the same. I don't know why it does that. Okay, so I'm going to graph that. I'm going to put in my asymptote. And it's not exact graph, but it's close enough. I can see what's going to happen. Can a function cross a horizontal asymptote. Actually, it can. Be that way. Okay. Here's my horizontal asymptote at two, and here's my vertical asymptote at one. That's nice if you label this. X is equal to one. Y is equal to 2, and then we're going to actually graph this. It goes through the origin. Yes, a function can cross a horizontal asymptote, but I know what this function looks like, so this is going to do this. And if you're just looking for a sketch, that's all you're doing. When you're coming to the left of 1, it's going to negative infinity. Now, up here, this has to go to positive infinity. It could cross, but I'm pretty sure it just does this. But they could have done, they could have had this. It could have been up here and then done this and settled off at two later. That's possible. 
So yes, a function can cross horizontal asymptotes. And you can have two horizontal asymptotes, but can you have three? No, let you try and draw three. Can a function have, can a function cross a vertical asymptote? <laughs> so if I have this, and here's my vertical asymptote, can my function, if it's a function, cross the vertical asymptote, what would happen? Not a function. So yes, you can cross horizontal ones, but not vertical, because you won't get a function yet. Be because I looked at my function and I said, where is the problem? Where do I have division by zero? X equals one. So we're going to do a couple off your worksheet. And I, I got a nice little graph out of that. Remember, four problems are without a graphing calculator. They can get you on this. So let's look at number one on the little white worksheet. The one I just gave you today. What's the first step? <laughs> Always substitute it in. Then I'm going to have to look at things from both sides. But let's try three. So it's three divided by zero. Well, we've been saying undefined, but now I want to be, if I want to graph it, I want to give it a value. And it's either going to be positive infinity or negative. So I'm going to put my infinity here, and then we're going to have to test. Because I don't know. So the limit, as x approaches 3, I'm going to put plus or minus here because I don't know. As x, you have to, you're going to have to do it from both sides. From the right of x over x minus 3. And you just try a number bigger than 3. So... 3.001. I just want to know if it's positive or negative. That's all I care about. Is that positive or negative? The numerator is positive. The denominator is positive. So this is positive infinity. Are they the same? Is the left one the same? I don't think so. <laughs> it probably won't be the same. So I'm going to 3 to the left. So we'll try... 2.99. Well, the numerator is still positive, but the denominator becomes negative, so this is negative. And you don't have to write down what you're trying. You can write down answer. You have two limits. Mm -hmm. So let's do number three, because the last class asked me about that one. Because you know what we did? We changed variables. Yes, yeah. Okay. Positive infinity from the right, negative infinity from the left. You have two answers. So let's do number three. I just showed a little bit of my work, is what I did. And number three bothered the last class because they didn't like the letter. Does it have to be X or could it be Y? It can be any letter. You can make them stars. You can if you want to. First thing we're going to do is substitute in six. What do we get? 12 divided by 0. Now, you, sometimes it's easier, but what if it didn't factor? You know, what if it was a square root? So you could factor it. I'm just going to work with it as written. I think it's easier if you factor it. But. So 6 from the right over y squared minus 36. And what's, what the problem with this is, because some of you have memorized a long, long way, memorizing isn't going to help you here. Plus, you'll forget everything. You just have to think. What if you try something bigger than 6, 6.1? Obviously, the numerator is positive. What about the denominator? Positive. So this is positive. That's it. Yeah, it's easy. It takes longer to explain than it does to actually do these. You should have noticed that yesterday. 6 from the left. So if you try 5.9. The numerator is still positive, but the denominator becomes negative. So this is negative. That's it. So yes, it took a while to explain, but remember I reviewed all the limits on what can happen. Yes. No. No, if I put a negative up here, parentheses, it'll be opposite. So at, at 6, no, at 6... On the right side, it's going to positive infinity. Left, it's going to negative infinity. That's all I know. 
It's not negative six. Negative six, then that's going to go through zero. So it's probably going to do this. Question over here. Ellie, did you have a question? What? Because if we want to graph it, we need to know what it's doing. Now, Ellie's question is good. Why do we have to say, why can't we just say it's undefined? Sometimes they will just ask you about a limit. And you have two choices. You can do all the work and say it's positive or negative infinity. You'll have to look at it from both sides unless they give you a one-sided limit. If you just say it's undefined because they're just asking for the limit, that will be okay also. Sometimes on the exam. Depends on context. If we're trying to graph this, we have to know if it's up or down. It just depends on context. But I know that there was one problem where you were better off saying undefined because the answer was negative infinity. And, and so students didn't put the negative sign in and they lost the point. And they said it was undefined, they were fine. That would be two years ago. You might have to graph on the test, yes. But and that's the whole point. But we're just trying to figure out what, what's happening to the function. We're trying to visualize what's happening. What is the limit? It's the y value. If you're getting a number divided by zero, I want to know what the y value is doing. Okay, um, let's do one of those piecewise ones. About number eight. I don't care. We can do nine. Let's do let's do nine. Now, do you want to see eight? It's done on the other classes, smart board, and on the other video. Okay. First thing is, I don't like the bar there. It's not a bar there. It's x q minus one for x greater than or equal to negative one. And this is a piecewise function. And this is for x less than negative one. And so I want the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. <laughs> now remember, this is a piecewise function. This is not a polynomial. So I have to check from both sides. There's no way around it. I wish. So should we check from the right first? Negative 1 from the right, which it may, I'm going to use equation 1 or equation 2. That is not a division sign. I want one, negative one, but from the right, bigger than negative one. First equation or second equation? First. Okay, so I'll actually write that in. Okay. And what is that value? It's going to be negative one cubed. Yes, I need those parentheses, even though I'm going to get the right answer. Anytime you substitute for a variable, you should always use parentheses. Then when you absolutely have to have the parentheses, you'll get it right. It's just a sloppy habit. What's this answer? It's negative 2. Now what are we going to do? We're going to take the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side. Am I going to use the first equation or the second? The second. And this is equal to 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Does the limit exist? Yeah. So what is the limit of f of x? Since I got a single answer from both sides, what is the one? Negative two. <laughs> yes. Doesn't matter. Do we care about what happens at the negative one? Remember for a limit, what if this had been just x is greater than negative one? There would be a hole at negative one, but do I care? No. Remember, I don't care what happens at that point. Only when I'm near it. And I have to follow the rule depending on which side I am. So if I were to graph that, x cubed minus 1, well, x cubed looks like this. And then minus 1 means it's going to shift down 1. And I don't want all of that. I want that when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So it's going to be here. That's negative 2. I want that piece for the first equation. And for the second equation, I don't want that I don't want this piece here, so I'm going to erase it. Whoops. So it comes down here at negative 1. This is at 2, negative 2. And then I'm going to do the next one, which is just a line of a slope of 2x, which looks like that. And if there were a hole there, no big deal. It's still coming close to negative 2. Because that's what it told me. This is to the right, and this is to the left. Yes. I could. 
But this is a nice polynomial, which means I can just substitute it in. Greatest integer. Greatest integer has steps. You have to be careful with that. Then you've got to actually do the 0.99. I can do negative 1. It'd be negative 0.9999. But because this is a beautiful polynomial, and by the way, it's only a one-sided limit, I can go ahead and substitute that in. The one-sided limit, you can substitute it. Now, I will tell you right now, for those who don't want to go and look at the other smart board, number eight, the limit does not exist. The left does not equal the right. And you would write the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. Please try to be succinct, concise, and, and to the point. When I'm reading those, I don't want a big essay. That gets the point across. I'm not assuming anything. You're telling me the limit from the left does not equal the limit to the right. Done. Limit does not exist. Um, let's see. Is there anything special? Be careful with the backside. They're, these are not all vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. It's a mixture, which makes this really actually a nice little worksheet. Let's get out the other one, this beige one that says more limit practice. And when I put these up online, I'll call it infinite limits, whatever the name is that's on there. So more limit practice, that's what it's called. Let's do number nine. This is the one from the 2008 exam. This is the one they threw out. I want the horizontal asymptotes from y equals 5 plus 2 to the x over 1 minus 2 to the x. Nope. This is a non-calculator, but it's not that hard. Now, here are the answers. There's multiple choice. Sure, what that one was. I forgot what it was. Maybe it was infinity. I, I don't know. But but let's do the problem. So, which way do you want to start? That let x uh, go to positive infinity. Remember, horizontal asymptotes are n behaviors. That's what you got to know. And n behavior is when x gets really, really big. Now, using the same reasoning we've used before, because that process of dividing by those squares, that's really only only works well for polynomials. I could do that here, too, but that's harder. Just think about it. When x gets really big, what can I ignore? The 5 and the 1. So this looks like 2 to the x divided by a negative 2 to the x. Don't ignore the negative sign. <coughs> pre algebra students don't ever want to put the negative in. They think it's not important. <laughs> yes, it is. What does that give you? What do these do? They cancel, right? What's the answer? Negative 1. What do you think the students put on their exam? They did that. Be careful on the exam. Even if you find the right answer in the very first choice, make sure you read through all the choices because they could be trying to fool you, and that's exactly what they did because there is another answer. That's why that's wrong. And I don't know if anybody got it right. But so few people got it right that they just threw it out. I've never seen that happen. They just threw out the question entirely. And they said, they wrote a note to the teachers that make sure that you teach going to positive infinity and negative infinity. I had, I don't, but I think that's tricky when the one answer is right there. Right away. Okay, 5 plus 2 to the x. 1 minus 2 to the x. Now, here's where I'm going to put some numbers in because I, I want you to see what's happening. Let's try x equal to negative 100. Then this is going to look like 5 plus 2 to the negative 100 and 1 minus 2 to the negative 100. And honestly, I don't think of negative exponents well. So I would rather write this as 5 plus. What does that negative exponent do? puts the, the, the 2 to the 100 in the denominator. I don't look at that and say that's a small number. I look at that and say that's a small number. And then this is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the 100. Now it's a little easier to visualize. At least it is for me. What's this number getting close to? 0. That's getting close to 0. So this is 5. 
to y equals 5, and that's why the correct choice is b. So there's there another choice there, too. But most students got the first one and read no further. So make sure you read through the entire list of choices. Right, because when x2 becomes a positive number, this looks like 2 to the 100 minus 2 to the 100, which is a huge number. But when x goes to a negative number, these 2s become really small. So these end up going to 0. That's why I put in numbers, because I can't see it. Well, I can see it because I've, I've done it so long, but I'm not always going to get it right. And then I put numbers and I go, oh, this term here in the numerator is going to go to 0, and this term here in the denominator is going to go to 0. So then we continued in the other class, and we did some more of these little problems on the back, because I'm not sure if you did know. Did you do the back one? The only one we can't do is number three, because I haven't taught the intermediate value there. I'm not even sure where it is. End quote. What about number ten? Now, this is one of those. What kind of asymptote is this? No, infinity. Horizontal. Vertical is when the denominator is zero. Okay. And I'm so lazy, I don't want to multiply those out. Okay? I'm really lazy. Math, most math statistics are. All, now, I know what this is. Where is that a graph of? It's just a numerator. It's a parabola. It's x squared, isn't it? And then what about the bottom one? x squared. Remember, when we look at x going to infinity, we only care about the leading term. So I'm going to find those leading terms right now, and I'm only going to multiply those. So to get the highest exponent I can get in the numerator is multiplying 2x times minus x, and multiplying x in the denominator times x. I don't really care about the rest. If you want to foil the rest of it out, you may. But all of that I'm going to neglect. I'm just going to ignore it. So that gives me minus 2x squared plus blah, blah, blah. And this is x squared plus blah, 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 which is irrelevant. I'm only going to focus on this, because x is going to infinity. What's the answer? Negative 2. Just look at it. When I first started teaching, I made the students show all the work. And after a while, I realized that was stupid. If you can just look at it and see what it's doing, that's better. They're both parabolas. This was just negative 2 times that. So that's why it equals negative 2 for the horizontal asymptote. That's all there is. Oh, but it didn't ask that. It just asked for the limit. Now, I wouldn't get any points taken off, I don't believe, for, for making that statement. Because it's beyond what's asked, but still it doesn't matter. What about 11 and 12? They look alike, but they're not. 11 is x going to 0. You substitute it in, what do you get? 0 over 0. 12 is a horizontal asymptote. Yes, you have to keep going. So 12 is easier. Can you tell me really quickly what the answer to 12 is? Somebody said it. What? Five thirds. That's right. All I look at is the leading coefficient. That's the exponent that's the highest. And 11, you have to factor that. Did you guys try it yet? Yes? No? Go ahead and do that. Somebody could come up here and put their work up here. That'd be nice. Oh, that's right. These classes are 